Now regarding the sermon, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, to appreciate the eloquence and diligence of the message completed during the pilgrimage of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want to read out a translation of the version that I have for you. And then inshallah we will piece it with nillahi ta'ala. There's so many, there's numerous lessons that we can gain from it. But we are confined to sticking to time today. We can't go over time. Yesterday we, we broke the barriers. Uh, we broke the barriers yesterday. We are confined to time. Uh, thus, I have extracted five lessons, and not a sixth one, inshallah, that I will share with you, that I will share with you. Now, also, we're going to read this in the English language. And the eloquence of it in the Arabic language is lost when you read it in the English language. The English language is a weaker language in terms of its ability to capture the emotion and eloquence of the Arabic language. And this is well known. This is well known. And perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will... Bless us all with the Arabic language and bless us all with the ability to read it one day in the Arabic language, in the words that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used when he addressed his sahaba. Amen. After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the people, O oh people, O oh people, lend me an attentive ear. Now somebody might ask very quickly that we have a microphone here that's amplifying my voice. How, was, how did 114,000 Sahaba hear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the plains of Arafah when he was on his mount addressing them? This is a question that comes to mind. And the historians say that they had these callers that were placed at different portions or different segments of the sufuf, of the lines. Like how we have in salah. So when the imam says, Allahu Akbar, a caller in the middle will announce the takbir so those behind him can hear. So this is how the message was being conveyed to everyone. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, look at the ease that we have today. Right? Look at the ease that we have today and look at the backwardness in terms of religious progress that we have in our lives. Allahu Musta'an. Allahu Musta'an. So he said to them, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Imagine how emotional that is to hear the, the person who you love say, I don't know if I will be with you next year. So he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, therefore, listen to what I am saying to you very carefully and take these words to those who could not be present here today. An invitation to da'wah. Take, this is a command, take these words to those who cannot be present here today. And this is you and I, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never forgot about us. When he stood there many, many centuries ago, he never forgot about you and I, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And how quick are we to forget him today, Allahu Musta'an. He actually said, in his speech to the Sahaba, that take it to those who are not here today. And they will obviously relay these words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to those that they taught the sermon to and would tell them as well that take this to those who are not here today. And this is a chain reaction. Thus, the sermon exists with us today thousands of years later. Allahu Akbar. How Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was selfless. He loved us. On his deathbed, he's He's crying out to Allah for his ummah. You and I. You and I, O servants of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he announces one day at how he loves to meet his brothers. He loves to meet his brothers. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in said, we are your brothers. And he said, no. You are my companions. But I yearn to meet my brothers. That's, that's us. Allahu Akbar. I yearn to meet my brothers. Those who will come. Who would not have seen me. And would not have witnessed the revelation. But they will believe in me. And declare the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are my brothers. And how I yearn to meet them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with him in Jannah. And allow us to meet him on the day of Qiyamah. And make us from amongst those that drink from his blessed hand. 
from his home on the day of Qiyamah, not those who are turned away by the angels. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cries out and says, these are my people, he gets told that you don't know what they did after. May Allah protect us all. Amen. He says, take these words to those who could not be present here today. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O people, just as you regard this month, Dhul Hijjah, and this day, the day of Arafah, and this city, the city of Mecca, as sacred, as sacred, as holy, just as you do this, thus regard the life and the property of every Muslim as sacred and as a sacred trust. And return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. And hurt no one, so that no one may hurt you. And remember that you will indeed meet your Lord, and that he will indeed take you to account for your deeds. Subhanallah, what an amazing opening. He says, God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has forbidden you to take usury and interest. Therefore, all interest obligations shall henceforth be waived. Your capital, however, is yours to keep. You will neither inflict nor suffer any inequity. Allah has judged that there shall be no interest and that all the interest due to Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib shall henceforth be waived. Beware of shaitan for the safety of your religion. Allahu Akbar. He has lost all hope that he will ever be able to lead you astray in the bigger matters. So beware of following him in the smaller matters. O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights with regards to your females. But understand that they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives only under a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and to be clothed. To them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. These are from the rights of our wives. As the Sharia has also set a right over us that we shelter them. These are from the rights that a wife enjoys in a marriage which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed over a spouse. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do treat your females well, your spouses well, your women well, and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. And it is your right that they do not make friends with anyone of whom you do not approve, as well as to never be unchaste. O oh people, listen to me in earnest. Worship Allah. Perform the five daily prayers, fast during the month of Ramadan, and offer the zakah, and perform the hajj if you have the means. All of mankind is from Adam and Hawa. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab. Nor does a non-Arab have any superiority over an Arab. White has no superiority over black, nor does black have any superiority over white, except by piety and good action. Learn that every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim, and that the Muslims constitute one brotherhood. One brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do an injustice to yourselves. And remember, one day you will appear before God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and answer for your deeds. So beware, do not stray from the path 
of righteousness after I am gone. After I am gone. O people, no prophet or apostle will come after me and no new faith will be born. Thus, reason well. And therefore, O people, understand these words which I convey to you and I leave behind two things. The Quran and the Sunnah. And if you follow these, you will never ever go astray. All those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others and those to others again. And it may be that the last ones understand my words better than those who are listening to me right now directly. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It may just be that you and I understand these words better than those who heard these words from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's Allah who opens the hearts towards understanding his revelation. And the sunnah is from the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then said, be my witness, ya Allah, O oh Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. Subhana rabbi al-a'la. This is it in a nutshell, O oh servants of Allah and O oh children of Adam. Amazing and amazing eloquence and amazing brevity and an amazing conciseness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us followers of this message and decree us to be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the year after. Amen. Amen.